Do you have an innovative mind? Do you have any design idea or product idea? Then it is your intellectual property. Like any other property, your intellectual property also has rights. These give creators or owners of patents, copyrights and trademarks to protect their design and products. These are basically administered by World Intellectual Property Organization or WIP. Hello everybody, I am Dr. Mumwa Chakraborty. I am going to take you for a tour around copyrights and trademarks as part of this intellectual property course. I welcome all of you to the lecture series on intellectual property. This is lecture 4 and we are going to study about copyright and trademark. Prior to this, we had studied about different types of intellectual properties and intellectual property rights in lecture 1. In lecture 2, we learned about patents. In lecture 3, we learned about how to draft patents. This is the clear outline of lecture 4. We are going to start with Copyright Act, then Nature of Copyright, after that Copyright Infringement, then comes Trademark Law, after that Trademark Classification, last but not the least, we are going to touch upon Trademark Registration and Infringement. Let me now introduce you to Copyright in India. The basic definition of copyright goes like this. Copyright refers to the legal right of the owner of intellectual property. In simpler terms, copyright is a right to copy. This means that the original creators of products and anyone they give authorization to are the only ones with exclusive right to reproduce the work. What is Copyright Act? As per Oxford English Dictionary, copyright is defined as follows. The exclusive right given by law for a certain term of years to an author, composer, etc. or his assignee to print, publish and sell copies of his original work. Copyright is mainly used to encourage dissemination of copyrighted works for public interest. Copyright in England and Wales Indian copyright law is very similar to that of England and Wales. First Copyright Act in England and the entire world happened in the year 1710. It consisted of 11 sections and formally the title was an act for the encouragement of learning by vesting the copies of printed books in the authors or purchasers of copies during the times therein mentioned. The statute then continued by stating the nature of copyright. Copyright in United States The first federal copyright statute passed by the second session of the first Congress was signed into law by President George Washington on May 31, 1790, predating ratification of the First Amendment and Bill of Rights. Although this Copyright Act of 1719 was the first federal copyright act to be instituted in the United States, most of the states had passed various legislation securing copyrights in the years immediately following the Revolutionary War. Today, Copyright Act of 1976 is one of the major copyright laws in the world. This is an act for the general revision of the copyright law, Title 17 of the United States code and for other purposes. Copyright Acts in India. The first Copyright Act in India was made in 1914. It was followed by Copyright Act of 1957. The Indian Copyright Act 1914 was based on the Imperial Copyright Act of 1911 passed by the Parliament of the United Kingdom, but was slightly modified in terms of its application to Indian law. According to this act, the period of copyright for photographs was 50 years from the time it was first published. In 1957, the Copyright Act that was developed after 1914 Act adopted many English provisions 
and introduce many new ideas and concepts which we are going to study in the next few slides. Let us now have a look at the copyright protection of architectural works in India. As per legislation, there are some very specific provisions as to what types of architectural works can be protected. In India, dams, bridges and boats fall outside the purview of copyright laws and hence cannot be protected. So India is relatively new to this sector of protection of architectural works by copyright and hence this is yet to gain popularity as per other developed countries. Copyright Act of 1957 was made as an act to amend and consolidate the law relating to copyright. It became valid from 21st January 1958. At that point of time, Copyright Office and Copyright Board both were created. And it introduced civil and criminal remedies against infringement also. Let us now look at the main features of Copyright Act of 1957. Under the Copyright Act 1957, the term work includes an artistic work comprising of a painting, a sculpture, a drawing, including a diagram, a map, a chart or plan, an engraving, a photograph, a work of architecture or artistic craftsmanship, dramatic work, literary work, including computer programs, tables, etc. In short, Copyright Act of 1957 gave the rights to performing rights society, for instance, music royalties. It gave definition to different categories in which copyright actually subsists. It also looked into international copyright and gave definition to infringement of copyright. Copyright Amendment Act of 1983 was made to amend the Copyright Act 1978 with respect to certain definitions, so as to limit copyright in certain artistic works of which three-dimensional reproductions were made available to the public. To facilitate the establishment of certain facts in actions brought by virtue of certain provisions of the said Act to make further provision for the regulation and control of the distribution, performance or exhibition of works without the consent of the copyright owner, and to make provision for the regulation and control of the reproduction or adaptation of certain artistic works without the consent of the copyright owner, and to provide for incidental matters. Now again, in 1984, we had another Copyright Amendment Act. This was also made to amend the Copyright Act 1978 so as to make provision for copyright in published editions. To extend the term of copyright in certain unpublished works, to further define the nature of copyright in cinematograph films and sound recordings, to create certain presumptions in respect of the proof of infringements of copyright in cinematograph films, to create certain new offenses, and to make provision for increased penalties and to provide for incidental matters. Copyright Amendment Act 1992 was used to amend the Copyright Act 1978 so as to amend, delete, or insert certain definitions to make provision that computer programs be eligible for copyright as a separate category of work to further provide for the conditions to be met before works become eligible for copyright to further regulate copyright in broadcast and program carrying signals to further provide for the protection of the moral rights of the author of a work, to provide further for dealing with the infringement of copyright and for the remedies available upon such infringement, to further provide for presumptions in proceedings relating to infringement of copyright, to further prescribe penalties for infringements of copyright, to further provide for the seizure of imported infringing copies, to further regulate the procedure relating to applications to the Copyright Tribunal, to extend the powers of the Copyright Tribunal regarding the granting of licenses and to make provision for appeals against decisions of the Copyright Tribunal, and lastly to provide for matters connected therewith. Now we are going to look into the term of copyright. A copyright has a term or length depending on 
when the work itself was created. It also depends upon the nature of work, the owner of copyright, and whether the work has been published or not. For works created after January 1, 1978, the term copyright is the life of the author plus 70 years, or if the work is a work for hire, the term is 95 years from the first publication, or 120 years from creation, whichever expires first. Here you must understand one thing, you cannot copyright your name, the title of your post or any short phrase that you use to identify a work. The reason is that copyright is designed to, to protect works of creative authorship. It is not designed to protect how that work is identified in the marketplace. The same goes for people and places. Nature of copyright. We would now look into the nature of copyright with various examples. Let us see one by one. Copyright can be provided to original literary works. It can also be provided to original dramatic works, to original musical works, to cinematograph films, to original artistic works, to sound recordings, to computer software, to song lyrics, to the novels, poems, short stories. Let us now turn our attention to copyright infringement cases of the world. Photographer Art Rogers shot a photograph of a couple holding a line of puppies in a row and sold it for use in greeting cards and similar products. Internationally renowned artist Jeff Koons used the photograph of Art Rogers to create a set of statues based on the image. Koons sold several of these structures, making a significant profit. When Rogers discovered this, he sued Koons for copyright. The outcome is that the court found similarities between the two images too close and that a typical person would be able to recognize the copy. Koons' defense was rejected under the argument that he could have used a more generic source to make the same statement. The significance is that uh, this is one of those famous cases that encompassed a larger issue in the art world, the issue of appropriation art. You cannot build upon another's work to create your own original piece. And if you do so, you have to face the consequences. Famous street artist Shefford Ferry created the Hope poster during President Obama's first run for presidential election in 2008. The design became a symbol for Obama's campaign. But in 2009, January, the photograph on which Ferry allegedly based the design was revealed by the Associated Press as one shot by AP freelancer Manny Garcia with the IP demanding compensation for its use in Ferry's work. Ferry responded with the defense of fair use, claiming his work didn't reduce the value of the original photograph. But the outcome was that the artist and the AP press came to a private settlement in January 2011, part of which included a split in the profits for the work. The significance is that you cannot use licensed work, but in the right circumstances, you can use stock imagery. When doing so, make sure everyone knows the source. Richard Prince is a well-known appropriation artist, one who transforms the work of others to create new meaning in his own work. For an exhibition in the Gagosian Gallery, Prince appropriated 41 images from a photography book by French photographer Patrick Carrier, claiming fair use that he created new meaning out of the photographs. Cario argued that it wasn't fair use but copyright infringement. The initial outcome was that the judge ruled in favor of Cario in 2011, claiming the changes made to Cario's photographs weren't significant enough to constitute a change in meaning. But later on in 2013, the original decision was overturned and the judge ruled in favor of Prince for the majority of the works in dispute, claiming that Prince's work transformed the work in a way that it was aesthetically different and thus acceptable under the argument of fair use. The significance is that 
Don't be a designer who creates work too close to that of another. You have to make sure you are creating something original and not derivative. Seattle design firm Modern Dog utilized a series of sketches of dogs in their compendium put out by Chronicle Books in 2008. The firm alleges that illustrations from that design have been used in a t-shirt produced by Disney for sale and filed a lawsuit in 2011. The outcome is that there hasn't been a decision yet in this case, but Modern Dog has been campaigning online pretty heavily for publicity and funds to help with its legal fees over the issue. The significance is that always defend your designs, regardless of who you are going up against. If you think your design is in the right, then make it known. Vanilla Ice had a hit in 1991 with Ice Ice Baby. It sampled but did not credit the song Under Pressure by David Bowie and Queen. The duo filed a case against Vanilla Ice. Later on, Vanilla Ice had to confess a sampling the work. The outcome is that the case was settled privately out of court with Ice paying an undeclared sum of money and crediting Bowie and Queen on the track. The major significance is that we should not use other people's creative work. But this was the most hilarious copyright cases ever. The film Galactica was produced in the wake of the success of the 1977 film Star Wars. But it had borrowed a little too much from Star Wars. Century Fox sued Universal Studios, the studio behind Battlestar Galactica, for copyright infringement, claiming that it had stolen 34 ideas from Star Wars. Universal Studios, however, promptly countersued Century Fox, claiming Star Wars had stolen ideas from the 1972 film Silent Running and the Buck Rogers serials of the 1940s. In the end, the case was decided in favor of Galactica. Who invented the graphical user interface? This was a simple question that led to the battle between the two tech giants, Apple and Microsoft. Although Microsoft helped develop Mac, Jean-Louis Gassy, who had taken over from Steve Jobs at that time, refused to allow Microsoft to use their software. Bill Gates pressed on nonetheless, deciding to add in features of its own to early prototypes of Mac. When Gassy noted the software, he was enraged. However, he did not want a lawsuit and ended up agreeing to license the Mac's visual displays. But Windows 2.0 turned out to be almost identical and Gassy believed it to be a breach of contract only having allowed their software to, use, to be used for 1.0 and not future versions. So without warning, Apple filed a lawsuit against Microsoft in 1988. This led to a six year long battle. Actually, Apple's case included 189 contested visual displays that violated its copyright. In 1989, the court ruled that 179 of the 189 disputed displays were covered by the existing license. Furthermore, the other 10 were not violations of Apple's copyright due to the merger doctrine. Copyright lawsuit was decided in Microsoft's favor on August 24, 1993. After learning about copyright, let me now introduce you to Trademark in India. A trademark is a brand name a trademark or service mark includes any word, name, symbol, device, or any combination used or intended to be used to identify and distinguish the goods or services of one seller or provider from those of others and to indicate the source of the goods or services. Let us now look at some of the classic trademark examples. Trademarks can be named, symbol, catchphrases, figure of mascot, and lyrics. Coco Channel is a perfect example of a name that is a trademark. McDonald's Golden Art is a classic example of a symbol trademark. 
A catchphrase is one that is identifiable to a person or company that is used to sell merchandise that can be trademarked. Donald Trump's You Are Fired is a perfect example of a trademark catchphrase. A classic example of a trademark character is Geeko's Talking Geeko. A songwriter's lyrics are trademarks. Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band made a hit single song, Like a Rock, in 1986, which is a trademark. All these classic trademark examples demonstrate how names, words, and physical marks can be used to distinguish a business from competitors. It is important that businesses are able to trademark these distinguishing marks. It helps keep competitors from copying their original work. It also helps their customers recognize them. We would now have a clear idea about trademark laws. Trademark law in India. The trademark law accords extraordinary protection to trademarks that are well known and safeguards them from infringement or passing off. The Trademarks Act 1999 protects well-known trademarks in two different ways. Number one, an action can be taken against the registration of similar marks. Number two, an action can be taken against the misuse of the well-known mark. Now let us turn our attention to trademark classification. There are 45 trademark classes. Classes 1 to 34 are for product classes and classes 35 to 45 are for service classes. Class 1 is for chemical, class 2 for paints, class 3 for bleaching preparations, class 4 for industrial oils, class 5 for pharmaceutical, class 6 for common metals and their alloys, class 7 for machines and machine tools, class 8 for hand tools and implements, class 9 for scientific apparatus, class 10 for surgical, class 11 for apparatus for light lighting, class 12 for vehicles, class 13 for firearms, class 14 deals with precious metals, class 15 deals with musical instruments, class 16 deals with paper, class 17 for rubber, class 18 for leather, class 19 for building materials, class 20 for furniture, class 21 for household or kitchen utensils, class 22 for ropes or string, class 23 for yarns and threads, class 24 for textiles and textile goods, class 25 for clothing, class 26 for lace and embroidery, class 27 for carpets and rugs, class 28 for games, class 29 for meat, fish or poultry, class 30 for coffee, tea, cocoa, class 31 for agricultural, class 32 for beers and mineral, class 33 for alcoholic beverages other than beers, class 34 for tobacco and matches. Now let us look at the service classes, class 35 for advertisement, class 36 for insurance, class 37 for building construction, class 38 for telecommunications, class 39 for transport, class 40 for treatment of materials, class 41 for education, class 42 for scientific and technological services, class 43 for services for providing food and drink, class 44 for medical services or veterinary services, class 45 for legal services. You can get more about this trademark classes if you go to this website. Now we will see how to register a trademark. Trademarks in India are registered by the Controller General of Patents, Designs and Trademarks, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India. Trademarks are registered under the Trademark Act 1999 and provide the trademark owner the right to sue for damages when infringements of trademarks occur. As soon as you register your trademark, it is entered into the trademark registry. This trademark registry recognizes well-known trademarks in India on the basis of international, national, and cross-border reputation. The Trademarks Act 1999 protects well-known trademarks in two different ways. 
The first one is an action against the registration of similar marks and the second one is an action against the misuse of the well-known marks. Now we will turn our attention to trademark infringement cases. DM Entertainment versus Baby Gift to House, Dilip Mehndi, the famous pop star from Punjab, has a large fan base and is extremely popular amongst Punjabi pop music lovers. DM Entertainment was incorporated in 1996 to manage the artist's escalating career. The defendant company, Baby Gift House, was making a large business by selling miniature dolls of the artist and cashing on his popularity. DM was extremely aggravated and filed for permanent injunction from infringing the artist's right of publicity and false endorsement leading to passing off. The plaintiff submitted that such was done for commercial exploitation without adequate permission from the person or any other authorized by him and shall constitute infringement of the person's right to publicity. Character merchandising is an area of law that is still unexplored in India. That was the first case that dealt with the issue of celebrity merchandising where the publicity rights of the artist was given due recognition. The Coca-Cola Company versus Bissellery International Private Limited. Bissellery had sold and assigned the trademark Maza including formulation rights, know-how, intellectual property rights and goodwill for India with respect to a mango fruit drink known as Maza to Coca-Cola. However, in 2008, Bissellery filed for registration of the mark Maza in Turkey and started exporting fruit drink under the name Maza. Coca-Cola claimed permanent injunction and damages for infringement of trademark and passing off. The court granted an interim injunction against the defendant, that is Bissellery, from using the trademark Maza in India as well as for export, which was infringement of trademark. Cadilla Pharmaceuticals Limited versus Cadilla Healthcare Limited. The Supreme Court held that it is insignificant whether the plaintiff and the defendant trade in the same field or in the same or similar products. The court laid down certain criteria to determine passing off of an unregistered trademark, such as the nature of the marks, the degree of resemblance between the marks, the nature of goods for which the marks are used, similarities in the nature, character and performance of goods or rival traders, the class of purchaser who are likely to buy goods bearing the marks, the method of purchasing the goods or placing orders and other circumstances that may be relevant. Here we have come to the end of this lecture on copyrights and trademarks. If you have any queries, you can email me at this email address.